So today we are finally getting around to doing Singe, and this is American Laserdisc. So since I initially uploaded my Daphne setup guide a few months ago, many people have been asking me if I could do Singe, and here it is. So consider it as a Christmas tree from your Uncle Just Jamie. So in this setup guide, I'm going to be showing you which files we need, how to rename files. I'm also going to be going through video settings for Singe, and we're also going to be taking a look at two emulators, that retro back going to be using in order to play your singe games this is quite an awesome system so check this one out <laughs> Okay, before I start today's Laserdisc Singe Retrobat setup, just hit notification, subscribe and like if you like the video today, it really helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you up to date retro emulation content as I release it, which is every day pretty much. I also cover a wide range of different emulators, standalone emulators, as well as front end setups. So we're looking at the awesome Singe games today, and these are American Laserdisc predominantly. So what we need to do first is take a look at the game files and also establish which emulators are going to be running Singe games through Retrobat. Now, first of all, we're going to head to the Retrobat shortcut. I and mean, if we right click on it, open file location, we're going to go to back to UI as always first. So we're going to just check out what we need to do our file extensions. If we just pop in some games into the Daphne folder for this, they're not going to be recognized. So we need to edit some folder names. So first of all, let's just go to system list and ignore what I'm doing here, but we're going to drop down system. And what we're going to do just here is just scroll down to Daphne. And if you don't see this, you probably not installed a Retrobat correctly. So check out my fully comprehensive setup guides for Retrobat. So let's open up Daphne. And here we go. So our extensions need to be .daphne, .actionmax, .7zip, .zip, .rar, .squashfs. Now, normally, when we're looking at extensions for Retrobat, we're looking at the actual files itself, but these actually need to be changed with the folders with the games inside. And if we take a look at cores, Libretro, Retroarch, we got no cores here. So we're going to be using two emulators for this, or rather we've got two emulators available for running Singe games, which are Hypsius and Daphne. So what we're going to do then is take a look at the game folders themselves. But first of all, we're just going to go down to the ROMs folder and we don't need BIOS for Singe games, but we're going to go down to Daphne folder. Now, if you're interested in Daphne and other laser disc games, then I did do a full Daphne setup guide a couple of months ago, so check that one out. And whilst I'm thinking about it, I also did Action Max. So Action Max is a lot like Singe, but the games were on VHS and there's only five games for that available. But I uploaded that one last night, so check that out if you're into this type of thing. So we're in the Daphne folder within ROMs. Now I've got my games here. Now I've already extracted five of these games. And what I'm gonna do is just show you how to extract. So it's saying that it's a zips folder. So I'm using WinRAR. So what I'm gonna do is just right click on it and extract. So it extracts this game, Titan AE, and just let that do its thing. Okie doke, so we can now delete that zip folder, so just right click on it and delete it, and let's take a look inside of Titan. Here we go, so inside of this game folder we got .singe.txt, and if we take a look inside of some other folders that I've already extracted, we'll also find those same files in here, so we'll have a singe file and a .txt file somewhere. So there's your .txt, timegal, and we've also got dot singe just there. What we need to do then is I've already done this, but I'm going to show you what to do. If we just rename this folder for Titan. So right click on it, show more options, rename. We're going to put a dot at the end of this, followed by Daphne. Okay, so as you can see, I've already done this to the other games I've got here. 
Okay, so I'm going to just drag all these skins. And remember, each folder has got the dot Daphne. And I'm going to drag those into my retro bat ROMs Daphne folder, just so you can see. Next thing we need to do is create some text documents for these. If you don't do this, your games aren't going to show or they're not going to play. So just right click on empty space in your ROM Staffany folder, go to new text document. And what we need to do here is name the games. So for example, the first game I'm going to do is cliffhanger, which is at the top. So I'm going to just type out here cliffhanger and leave the dot text at the end. That's absolutely fine. And to make this a little bit quicker, just left click on the game folder, show more options, rename. And what I'm going to do is just right click and copy. So we're going to open up a new text document. So right click at empty space again, text document. And if I press control and V, that's going to paste that. So I obviously need to take away the Daphne. And so as we can see, that corresponds with the Crime Patrol HD. So it's named exactly the same. Just the folders are going to be .daphne, whereas these text documents end with a .txt file extension. So we're going to do this again with Madstock. So rename, right click, copy, open up a new text document. And in here, Control V, and then just take away the Daphne. And again, for Space Pirates, right click, show more options, rename, right click, copy, new text document, control and V. And again, take away Daphne and the dot. Okay, and finally, we got Titan. Okay, so now all our games are named correctly and we got those accompanying text document files. What we're going to do is open up Retrobat. Okie doke, so if you've done this correctly, you should see Daphne up here. And here is all the games. So what we're going to do first is just select, which is going to bring up the options, advanced system options, emulator. Now we've got two emulators to use here, but we need to download each one as RetroArch don't support these games. So we can either choose the first option or Daphne. If I'm going to just leave this to auto for now, other things we need to look at is video settings and what I'm going to do is pop this one back on to auto and I'm also going to put my video back to auto and I'm going to show the difference in a second. So first of all, let's open up one of these games and I'm going to open up my favourite which is Time Gal. And like I say, we do need to download the emulator so on this part we're just going to press yes. And as we can see, the image is cropped. So you've got the time at the top and you can barely see it. So if we back out of this game, what we're going to do is adjust the video settings. So press select on your controller, advanced system options. And what we're going to do is just make some changes here. So game aspect ratio, I'm going to leave to 16 by 9. And the video part under video modes, this is the important part. So by default, this is going to be displaying at 1080p 60 hertz. It could be different for your monitor or your screen you're using. For me, I find the option 720p, uh, 1280 by 720, it's 60 hertz, fine. So if I back out again, and just, just bear in mind, we've also got smooth games by linear filter, which is already turned on. Uh, we got shader set just here to add scan lines or whichever effect you might like. 
And under decorations, we don't have a decoration for Singe. But if you're going to use a decoration, then just remember to put the aspect ratio back to 4x3. So we've got video set up now for my screen at least, which is 1280 by 720 running at 60 hertz and game aspect ratio is on 16 by 9. Now, if we open up the game again, time gal. So as we can see, that's running perfectly. If we go back to our system options again, go back down to video, force full screen. Let's try and put this on to yes. And this time I'm going to open up another game. So we're going to go for Crime Patrol. Okay, so I'm going to also check out Cliffhanger, but this time I'm going to change emulator. So select Advanced System Options Emulator, and we're going to use Daphne for this. Let's check this out. And we're going to install Daphne. Cliffhanger. so that also works fine with the daphne emulator as well and i have no idea how to play that one uh, we also got mad dogs let's quickly open up this one this is probably the most famous one alongside time gal kind of a shot you are pilgrim take a crack at this bottle and for some games you might find the fire button action button isn't responding so in that case it's more likely going to be your keyboard so if you want to put those keyboard buttons onto your actual controller such as the xbox controller it's just a simple case of going back to the settings and we can go down to edit pad to key profile and from here Everything looks like it's actually already set up, but if you want to change this and edit it, then it's just a simple case of finding out on your keyboard which button does which. Just press down on one of these options here, so for example, D-pad up, that's going to bring up a virtual keyboard. Now, say for example, in the game, the keyboard responds to moving your cursor upwards on the screen, then we'll find the relevant key on the virtual keyboard and map it out with our controller. And just make sure to save it once you've done this. And let's just finally check out Titan. And every now and again, you will get Parson Fall. That's fine, it's a one time thing only.
And that's it for today's Retro Bat in Singe America Laser Disc setup, guys. Like I said at the start of the video, if you enjoy what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe, and like so you don't miss upcoming retro emulation content. Also, feel free to join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Anyways, until next time, stay retro. <laughs>